Hi, welcome to another video from Product Success Ranger Series. My name is Yu Hong Ng and I'm a Product Success Technical Director from ServiceNow. Today I would like to show you how to leverage ML to accelerate your service mapping journey. But before we dive into it, just a quick note that this presentation may contain forward-looking statements. I will first go through a quick recap of the different ways we create service maps and then I'll show you how to use the Service Mapping Plus application to check if your platform is ready for service mapping and finally show you how to create or enhance existing top-down service maps based on suggested connections and suggested application services. A quick recap of the application services. We have the dynamic CI group, the manual way, the tag base, the pattern based connections, and the ML connection suggestions. On the right side is the top down method of service mapping, which can be both connection suggestions and pattern based. I would like to focus today on ML to help map our services, which is on the right side. <coughs> so, how did our ML-based service mapping journey begin. It all started with application fingerprinting when we clustered and grouped processes. Then our predictive intelligence slash machine learning evaluated the connections between application fingerprints, CIs and processes and ranked their relevancy. Service mapping then generated connection suggestions for servers and load balances for you to decide which connection to add or remove from the application services. So the advantage of this method is speed, mapping in minutes versus hours and days. For those of us who's done the top-down service mapping knows it does take a bit more time to figure out the connections information, perhaps created new connection sections, um, and then having to discuss with the service owner on where those information can lie. So it does take a few days to probably do a top-down service mapping via the pattern based. The disadvantage of using machine learning service mapping is it needs to be learned and trained. Predictive intelligence is a machine learning solution and needs training. To achieve best results using discovery method, you must run discovery repeatedly. We will look at how to assess your environment's readiness for machine learning service mapping. Let's have a quick look into machine learning service mapping through this demo. ServiceNow Service Mapping Plus is included as a value-added solution to item visibility. So this plugin is required for us to start using machine learning service mapping. So since 2021, all the innovations has been delivered in this Service Mapping Plus store app. This store app is regularly updates, updated, so please check your instance regularly and take advantage of the latest feature. Starting in Vancouver release, ServiceNow introduced a new map view called the Unified Map. And in this modernized map view, dependency and service maps looks the same, and you can view the data in many different ways. But this view does not work out of the box with service mapping and must be enabled. So we must go to sys properties and add this property value and set the type to true, false, and the value to true. Okay. Once that's done, uh, let's go look at the service mapping workspace. Okay. So this is included as part of the Service Mapping Plus store app. This homepage is a single pane of glass for you to visualize your service mapping posture. And each report can be drilled down to see the resources that meet the report criteria. Let's, I'll quickly go through the, each of these widgets to explain what they contain. Uh, map application service are the number of map applications that you have. ML powered candidates shows how many ML service ML identified service candidates that can be mapped. Map service shows the number of map servers 
included in at least one map application service. A map service shows a report of unmapped service broken down by servers that are part of a service candidate and those that are not. So your target, your goal should be to reduce to reduce all this to zero because each server should provide some level of service and should be included in the application service. And the bottom widget shows uh, service maps by operation type, by creation method, and by criticality. Okay. So previously I mentioned, how do you check your environment uh, and whether um, your, your environment is ready for ML service mapping? Okay. So there are two key ingredients necessary for ML-based service mapping. One is TCP connection data. Okay, let's look at the table. ServiceNow Discovery collects this data during uh, discovery scans, and you can see different listening on and uh, connecting two types. Also, each TCP connection record references a running process PID for a given computer. Next, we will look at the second component required, which is called running processes. ServiceNow Discovery collects TCP connection and running process data during scans, either through ADM or ADME. ADM only collects TCP and running process data during discovery scans, and ADME installs a script on host machines that runs a NetStack command every two minutes by default. You can configure how often this occurs with a system property. To check the readiness of your environment, we have to go to the service mapping workspace here and click on the list view of, uh, part of the workspace. And I'm going to show you the three areas uh, to look at. Okay. Right. So prerequisites are all the prerequisite configurations needed for ML-based service mapping. If anything is not ready or partial ready, you can click on the item directly to configure it. Towards bottom, you'll see the application fingerprint training status. And then also on the right side, there is a uh, discovered connection suggestion status, which indicates how many connection suggestions are trained and not trained. So both of these should have a lot of data in your production environment if you have activated uh, uh, machine learning for service mapping. Just a note, uh, the prerequisite property uh, called ADME is optional for machine learning service mapping. At a minimum, you should at least have ADM running, but if you do choose ADM, it will give you higher quality TCP and process connection data. Okay. So how do we use ML to help us create um, application services? Until recently, the questions of where do I begin when mapping services has been the biggest challenge. So automated service such suggestions will eliminate this question by actually suggest suggesting service candidates that include a pre-identified set of resources to be included in the service map. So with a few clicks, I'm going to show how we can gain business context for infrastructure and applications. Let's start with the service mapping home workspace. And let's click on ML powered candidates. Right, so you are taken to a list of service candidates that ServiceNow has created from machine learning. Each application service candidate is a number and shows the uh, following information. Candidate name suggestions is just a primary candidate name that prioritize the load balancer name suggestion, then defers to other name suggestions as appropriate. Okay. 
uh, resource count looks at the number of resources in the initial map and load balancer name suggestions and process name suggestions uh, may, may be populated or may be empty. So in our case, in, in my instance, we have name suggestions coming from the AFP. Okay. So in the AFP, you'll see that um, the top three application fingerprints associated with that candidate will be included in that uh, name suggestion. I only have a few ML powered candidates right now, but in production, you should have hundreds of suggestions in your production instance. Okay. So you may want to narrow this list in your environment and search for a specific application or processes or a load balancer name. For example, um, I can filter this to look at a process that contains uh, SQL store or uh, SQL messaging uh, using this filter criteria here. Okay. You can also preview a map. Uh, before we actually uh, decide what to do with the uh, service suggestion. So let's, for example, choose this service uh, candidate suggestion and do a preview map. Okay. And as you can see, there is um, a preview of the application service that 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 will uh, that it will eventually look like this. Uh, notice how the preview opens in Unified Map View. So at this stage, we haven't actually created the service yet. Okay. So if we do want to map it, and and because we've uh, we're happy with what it looks like, we can actually select that and click on Map Application Service. Right. So let's click on that. <coughs> So once we are there, we can have we have the option to create new service or add to an existing service. So that's pretty powerful because if you have done a lot of top-down service maps already and you want to add to them, you can do that through here. Okay. But if you do want to create a new service from scratch, um, we can uh, we just have to enter the description. Uh, the uh, service owner, which is basically the owner of the service, which will map to the assigned to field in the CMDB. And also we should populate service group, which is where it will appear in the service operations workspace health dashboard. And once you fill those in, click map service and it will start a host detection for the entry point. It will discover the process connections for each of the connection suggestions that were added to the map. And it will eventually build out the service map. That should look like the preview map that we saw. Okay, as you can see in the demo, we were able to create a new application service in minutes. So this is all thanks to machine learning, going through all the running processes and TCP connection to provide meaningful grouping of processes. Okay, so automated service suggestion took the information provided by machine learning and simplified the machine process and calculated the entry points, eliminated the challenge related to knowing where to begin mapping an application service and it also generated a list of application service candidates so for those that's invested heavily into top-down service mapping uh, consider using the connection suggestions to improve the accuracy of the existing service especially connection suggestions of high confidence also leverage the global local connection rules to automatically add connections also review the ML powered candidates to add into an existing application service. If you want to map multiple application services quickly without having to figure out entry points or connections information, review those ML powered candidates to create new application services from scratch.
Thank you very much for your time. I wish you all the best in your ITOM journey.